Hello everybody and welcome back to The Second Shelf. It's almost May, it's the 29th of April when I'm filming this and hopefully uploading. And so it's time for my May TBR. For those of you who might be new to the channel, for the purpose of this video, TBR means to be released. So at the beginning or at the end of the month, I look at the next month and I look at the new releases and then I pick a couple, four or five, that I personally thought sounded interesting and I share them with you in the hope that you might find them interesting too. And as always we start off with literary fiction um, and this month I picked Aja Gable's book The Ensemble which will be released in the US on the 15th of May. There's no UK release date yet so sorry all you British people and Australian and Canadian and rest of the world, but in the US it will be released on the 15th of May. This is a debut novel and as you might know, if you're following my channel for any length of time, I always try to read at least one, if possible, two debut novels uh, every month in order, you know, to see what is new out there. So Aja Gable is a young Californian writer, um, Russell from Ink and Paper blog. Check out her website, I will leave a link down below because you might go to one of the events and tell us all about it if you're interested in the book. Um, but anyway, so she's an, 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 a Californian writer and she wrote uh, short fiction, she published short fiction in a variety of magazines and now The Ensemble is her, her first novel um, and it's about an ensemble, um, a, a, a string quartet called the Vaness String Quartet, so four people, two um, men, two women, who play together, start, play, start playing together when they were young. Um, and the novel, as far as I understand it, because I haven't read it yet, obviously, da, um, follows them uh, through adulthood, um, so over a a lengthy period of time and what I found interesting from from the premise and the theme is this idea of a tight group bound together by music. Uh, I'm all, also interested in, in the musical aspect uh, of it uh, but mainly this the, the group aspect of, of four people you know working together making art together um, and what that means for their relationship and their friendship. So that's why I picked Aja Gable's uh, The Ensemble for the literary uh, fiction debut novel for my May TBR. And next we move to translated fiction and I picked a book from a, a French-Italian author Emmanuel de Villepin, The Devil's Reward, which will come out also in the US only uh, on the 1st of May. Now Emmanuel de Villepin was born in France but she moved to Geneva when she was young and then she was educated in New York. She's a lawyer um, originally, probably that's what drew her to, her to me, me to her. Anyway, uh, but she has been living in uh, Milan now since 1988. She was born in 1959, just to give you more useless information. Um, and uh, I, I read her, one of her, she has written seven novels, uh, and I've read her Tempo di Fuga, I think 10 years ago, but my Italian is sketchy. I liked the book, but it, it was just too difficult for me uh, in the end to, to really read and appreciate. And her work has never been translated into English until now. So The Devil's Reward is her first uh, work of fiction that is translated into English. And maybe I should tell you what the book is about. So The Devil's Reward is a multi-generational look at uh, women's lives in Paris. We have Christina, an 86-year-old woman living alone in Paris, um, and her daughter Catherine, who takes refuge um, uh, with uh, her mother uh, because her husband is cheating on her and Catherine brings along her own daughter Luna and so these three women uh, start living together and uh, the book is then about the family history. Uh, Christina starts telling, that's what I uh, get from the blurb, Christina starts telling her life's history and the family life's history and I'm always intrigued by 
um, multi-generational tales. That, that's just something I, I really like. Um, and as I said, because I knew Emmanuel de Vilper, by the way, the book is translated by C. John Delogu from the French into English. I should mention that as well, because translation and translators are important. But anyway, so I'm, I'm really happy that um, now a book of hers has been translated into English um, and the story sounded interesting. So that's why it made um, the list of the May TBR. Next up is nonfiction, and I think you will all want to put this book uh, this book on your your TBR, and I mean TBR to be read, because it's Zora Neale Hurston's book Barracoon, which will be published uh, on the first of May. And now you might think Zora Neale Hurston, she's dead, which is true. She died in 1960. Um, for those of you who might not be familiar with her, she was one of the most important uh, voices of the Harlem Renaissance. And her book, Their Eyes Watching God, is, is an American classic. Uh, but this book has never been published before. So it's a new book by a dead author. Um, um, like I said, Barracoon, which means... Um, uh, barracks, uh, temporary barracks for criminals or slaves. And the book is about the last black cargo, quote unquote. Um, uh, so the last ship um, that transported slaves from Africa to America. And in 1931, I believe, uh, Sora Neil Hurston interviewed the one surviving um, member of this cargo, horrible to say it this way, but that's what it is, Cujo. Uh, he was 95 at the time, uh, and he told her his life story and the story about um, the slave trade, and then she made it into her own book. So I thought it sounded fascinating, um, and it's I'm sure it's an important book to read, um, I, I have no idea. I couldn't find out why it hasn't been published before. Maybe, maybe the manuscript was lost or anything, so I don't know that. Um, but I, I'm really uh, looking forward to, to reading this because, like I said, I think it's a, uh, it will be an important book. So please, if you're interested in nonfiction, consider uh, Zora Neale Hurston's book, Barracoon, 1st of May. Not 1st of May, but 8th of May, Barracoon. The right date is down in the description, um, but I, I think I said 1st of May, but it's the 8th of May. Anyway, moving on. Next up, the fourth book is Crime, but it's also a debut uh, novel, and that is Amy Molloy, uh, The Perfect Mother, uh, which will indeed be published on the 1st of May. Now, Amy Malloy is an American author and she wrote nonfiction before. I will leave a link to her website down below if you're interested to check out her nonfiction work. But like I said, this is her first novel, a crime book. Um, it's, it's set in present day um, in New York and we have a group of mothers. Uh, they call themselves the May Mothers because they all gave birth in May. And one uh, evening they all meet up for drinks on the 4th of July. Um, and the child of one of the mothers, Winnie, um, is abducted, uh, kidnapped, while the, the women are having drinks. Um, it's a psychological thriller, that's at least how it's, uh, it's marketed, and the story takes off after the, this abduction of kidna or kidnapping, when the women try uh, to help uh, Winnie find her son, because obviously uh, the police completely bungles the investigation. That is always a bit of a pet peeve for me. Let's see how she, uh, Amy, uh, Amy, Amy May Malloy does it, because normally these sort of private investigations have a tendency of not being believable because the police is doing work and you can't interfere as a private person but uh, because it's already made clear in the blurb that the police bungles the investigation so it, it all depends on the execution but I thought I thought the theme was interesting, interesting and I'm into uh, a, a crime novels and certainly crime novel by a new author so that's why um, M.A. Malloy's The Perfect Mother made the list. 
always, we finish off with sci-fi or fantasy, and this time it's fantasy, uh, and also a debut novel, Rebecca F. Kuang, The Poppy War, which will be released on the 1st of May also. Um, now, you might know, if you're following me, I'm, I'm not that big of a fantasy reader, but this title um, sort of grabbed my attention. I saw the book first in one of Steve's um, uh, mail halls. I will leave a link to his channel down below, Steve Donahue. I'm sure you you know him and are subscribed to him. Um, and rewind. Let, let's talk about the author and the book first. So Rebecca F. Kuang is an, uh, a young American novelist. Um, and uh, this is her debut, I said that already, and it's uh, a fantasy revolving around a, a Chinese sort of fantasy empire with a female, uh, a kick-ass female protagonist, that's what drew me to it in the first place, um, who aced a very difficult test to enter um, uh, the academies, which is you know, the, the, the school for the, the gifted. I'm not sure what kind of magical gifts uh, she has, uh, but anyway, she uh, enters the school and then she is shunned there because she is dark-skinned and from a poor family. Um, and there's, uh, 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 the empire is threatened by a war. So it, it's your typical, you know, fantasy setup. And, and like with the previous book, The Perfect Mother, it will all depend on the execution, which I cannot judge because I haven't read the book yet. But the fact that um, it's a female um, protagonist as the as a hero that d d sort of sparked my attention, and also the fact that it's um, that the the world is obviously uh, sort of a Chinese esque. Um, empire. I thought that that sounded interesting. But like I said, it, it will depend uh, on the execution. What uh, Another point that sort of made me doubt uh, whether um, to pick up the book is that it's the first book in a trilogy. And as you might know if you're following me, I'm not good with series. And I'm always afraid uh, to commit, you know, to, to three books. So I hope that this book will, that you can read it as a standalone and not with an, a huge cliffhanger in the middle of the story, but but I, I don't know. But anyway, it, it sounded interesting enough um, from the female protagonist and, and the Chinese um, aspect of it that I, I put it on the list anyway. So, these were my five picks uh, for the May TBR. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, let me know down in the comments whether any of the books that I talked about might interest you, and also whether you have any new releases uh, coming in May that you are excited about that I didn't mention, um, or any other book you are excited about to read in May, and I will see you all soon in my next video. Bye-bye!